Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. It's time for us to have our first conversation. And we're going to be looking at the infectious diseases bill that has everyone talking on Twitter, on social media, and even in real life. Lots of people had opposed the bill, talking about the fact that they feel that it's infringing human rights. But what do we know? We will be speaking with the experts. Joining us today is Barrister Harry Mwabweze, the managing partner of Classicos uh, Partners. Thank you so much for joining us, Barrister Harry. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, so maybe we should just go straight into yeah. the conversation for today. What's your take on the bill? And why is everybody tagging it? Or why are lots of people tagging it as a bill that is infringing on human rights? Well, well, the continuous, um, you know, spread of this um, deadly virus, you know, has led the legislation into uh, trying to find measures or ways to curb, you know, the spread and all that. Mm -hmm. So apparently, um, I think because of the um, contagious nature of the disease, so the legislation had um, tried, looked for ways to um, enact a law that would be able to um, contain the said um, virus, uh, the said virus here. Yeah. And so apparently the they, they saw reasons, or I see reasons with them why they have to, you know, make efforts to put down the bill. But uh, a, a, a lot of Nigerians have come out to say that this is uh, infringement on their rights because if there is, we all know that uh, that this virus is deadly and this virus is out there. Well, a couple of us know that. But uh, putting out a bill that would, you know, restrict uh, the the, uh, the the citizens in some certain way, don't you think that proper measures were so would have been taken to suggest such a bill in the first place? Don't you think that's why Nigerians are reacting to the bill at all? Well, well, I understand. Um... I understand the challenges that Nigerians are having mm -hmm. in terms of um, the passing of the bill. But notwithstanding our challenges, um, the truth of the matter is that the legislators have to do what is right, and mm. which is trying to find measures to protect the citizens. In as much as um, um, I agree that they are doing the right thing, however, there are still loopholes. And uh, as a matter of fact, you know, we have to start understanding, legislators have to start, on the, start understanding that, you know, we have to start making our, be, our, our acts, our laws um, um, homegrown, you know, because mm -hmm. I looked at it and I totally saw a verbatim, a repetition of what we have in Singapore. And it's really appalling. Yes. Because I took, my, I took time, I saw that my team, we took time to criticize this bill. But thank God that yesterday the House finally agreed to um, step aside and, you know, put it up for public hearing, which, mm. is, a, which is a welcome, you know, development in Nigeria. Mm. You know, so the law has, the, the, the bill has a lot of loopholes, which outlined about six to seven loopholes that the bill has, mm. you know, um, 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 starting from um, vaccination, uh, um, um, you know, police pass to arrest, um, the unfettered power that was given to the um, DG, uh, you know, and even the president, even the unfettered part I was giving to them to, you know, um, uh, identify isolation places, mm -hmm. you know, these are, these are, these are infringements on uh, our fundamental rights. And so if this must take place, I feel that there are both, there are modus operandi, there are, mo there are ways that the government should, uh, the legislators should have a way to, you know, implement or couch these um, laws so as not to infringe on rights. So you can imagine just being, just driving on the street and a police officer stops me and, you know, checks me and probably my temperature is high and he takes me and, you know, takes me to an unknown isolation center. Mm -hmm. So you find out that the bill has a lot of loopholes, okay? Mm -hmm. So it would see that it's giving an unfettered power to these personnel, you know, Considering the fact that over time the Nigerian police has always overused power here and there, so imagine adding this additional power to them. Mm. So it gives these people right to do and undo, and this is where I find it more worrying. While I had to criticize the bill, luckily yesterday it was set aside for public hearing. 
All right. Well, were there any strengths to this bill? Seeing as we focused on the inadequacies of the bill, the loopholes here and there, would you say that there were any strengths or any positives that you found in this bill? Yeah, yeah. The, the strengths in the bill are quite enormous and, you know, very welcoming. Uh, for example, the, the essence of the bill, the aim of the bill is to actually, um, the bill made provisions to contain the spread of these viruses. Okay, if you look at uh, various um, sections, section 24 and all that, you would find out that um, the bill actually made provisions for um, confinement of persons suspected to have, you know, had they contacted the virus, okay, which is welcoming because at the end of the day, we differentiate those who are um, infected and those who are not infected, right? Yes. But, you know, criticizing that part of the law, you, the law is couched, the, the, the clause is couched in such a way that you only suspect. It does not, you do not subject them to medical evidence. So that when you criticize for that, you find out that it's, it's breaching um, the, you know, uh, consent laws and all that and, you know, uh, one time view. So you find out that there's a lot of um, um, advantages that the bill poses, uh, just that except for the fact that, um, um, you know, it's just a repetition and verbal thing. For example, where a policeman suspects you to, yeah. you know, have the virus, yeah. they arrest you. I yeah. mean, how does a policeman, how do you equate a policeman exactly. to a medical worker or exactly. a health expert? So, you know, it, it, um, it's worrying. I, sometimes I, I begin to wonder if these guys at the um, uh, upper chamber, I begin to wonder if they really have, you know, um, experts and, um, you know, um, and what do you call them? Stakeholders who help them to, who advises them and tell them what to be and what not to be. Because uh, looking at uh, this uh, this area of uh, the, the police having some certain amount of power, um, the, 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 the vaccination and every other thing, uh, the concern and worries of the Nigerian people are like, okay, if you're going to do this, are we even going to do it right? How would you say a policeman can suspect has the power to suspect if you have the virus and be able to arrest you. A policeman is not a medical doctor in the first instance. Now, we've been having conversations with people around the, the country who've been uh, talking about how uh, the whole process of the ease of the lockdown has been. And speaking about having, uh, um, having checkpoints in various areas, and there are no medical personnel with these police people. So how do you um, pass a bill that you can give a policeman the right to to suspect that you have a virus and be able to arrest you in that regard. You know, so that one has uh, caused a lot of conversations on social media and, you know, even physically. And people were like, you can't do that. This is uh, a total infringement on the fundamental human right. Now, moving forward, um, as, as, as um, this was, a, was an idea, we all, we all know the, 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 the general um, reason for putting out a bill like this is to curb the spread of the virus. People were, um, were suggesting that there were other measures that were supposed to be on that bill and uh, were not even put in place, like uh, um, building more isolation centers, making it compulsory for, for, um, for, for state uh, governments or state governors to make sure in each uh, local government you can have an isolation center. These were situations that uh, the people were, were talking about that needed to be in the bill, but were unnecessarily neglected. Now, what, what in your yeah. own view, what do you think are those things that you would say or you would uh, suggest that uh, would be, should be on that bill that were neglected, uh, either intentionally or just uh, totally neglected um, from the bill? What would you say you would have suggested? Well, well, well coming from the point of law, right? Yes. You would um, discover that um, at, at, in the bill made provisions for um, complaints. You know, you remember I said that the DG, the health minister, they have unfettered right to, you know, order arrest mm -hmm. and, you know, and all that. And they also have the right to declare a place an isolation center. They also have a right to, um, uh, they also have a right to uh, actually destroy a building, mm. goods, where they have suspected that there's likelihood of, 
contamination. Spread of the virus. Spread of the virus, yes. yes. Contamination, exactly. Yes. So now you will discover, you will, you will understand with me that that's an unfettered right, right? So mm -hmm. there's, there's need to... There's, uh, there's need to make adequate, there's, there's need for an adequate measure for, uh, for complaints generally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there is, but I feel the time limitation for complaints is almost unachievable. Mm -hmm. So if an individual is aggrieved yes. and wants to go to court, the magistrate court, as the bill proposes, right? Yes. The time limitation to file, knowing full well that our court processes are, are, are um, you know, a court, a judiciary has a lot of lapses. Okay, so um, you know the time limitation is worrying, mm. and so there's need for adequate measure. And then the use of some languages in the in the in the bill, you know, they are quite um, they are quite archaic, or rather, um, uh, uh, they are not fit for our system in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the the unfettered power given to the police. Um, um, the uh, immunity clauses that we, they are giving to the DGs and the health minister, even the president. Mm -hmm. So all these clauses are, to me, they are actually draconian. They are, they are, they are, they are not fit for our system. That's the language I, I would prefer to use. Mm -hmm. So we need to, for giving a, a, an immunity to a DG, okay, you would understand with me that he can do and undo yes. and go scot free. Yes. So he does not bear any legal liability. I, I really, I mean, that's, you are, you are unnecessarily telling him to do anything he can anything do to anybody. Yes. So perhaps he has people who have really offended him in the country and it's an avenue for him to, you know, <laughs> deal with them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you would agree with me that um, against all odds, right, we need to... Um, they, they, I mean, there are some places in the provisions where the bill proposes that, you know, where they, they can come into your house and boggle you that, oh, we got a call that you have, yeah. um, you, you, you are suspected to have um, um, like COVID-19. Yes. And then exactly, and then they bundle you and take you to unknown places. And when you die, you can, your family does not have access to your body hmm. and all that. No, these are really welcoming. But the language and the manner it was couched, we need to, you know, recouch it to fit the system in Nigeria. in Nigeria. This is a developing country that is managing human rights, and you could, you would believe, you would understand with me that, you know, we are going forward in terms of human rights. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want to speak about that, mm -hmm. but you know, bringing out this bill right now is, is I mean, is Something we cannot um, contain. Eventually, I think we the the hence the need for the re, 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 um, you know the need for public hearings and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, you, after you, this stage. Okay, sorry to cut you there. Um, you, you, yeah, it's, I mean, it's after this stage. Yes. After this stage, mm -hmm. um, a lot of things will be put in place, and I mean, we'll have a better deal eventually. Okay, um, on a lighter note, boy, lighter but a very important note as well, before we let you go. There are a lot of, this bill came under a lot of criticism for many reasons, with some saying that the bill was an avenue for, you know, the members of the assembly to sort of push Nigerians as guinea pigs for foreign uh, vaccines to be tried upon. Some others saying it was infringing on human rights. Several theories pushed here and there concerning this bill as it came under strong criticism. Now, there are some other people that believe that rather than focusing on this bill, there should, there should have been other bills that the houses should have looked at. Bills like the bills to um, encourage or bundling of the NNPC, which is sort of a cash cow, and uh, bills to sort of end gas flaring, bills to ensure that the electricity distribution company, you know, man, they are mandated to put prepaid meters in different houses. There are several other bills that they said should have actually been looked at. And the rate and speed at which this bill was almost being passed was the worrying part. So from where you stand, what are some of the bills, if you had the opportunity to suggest bills that should undergo speedy passage, what would some of those bills be? Even if you had to create them from the scratch, what bills would you suggest? Well, well, well right now, I, I feel there should be more concentration on the um, crude, you know, the oil sector. Because right now a lot is happening all over the world. I would, I would, I would be very sincere with you. And um, a lot of countries are adjusting to the current situation. And so, if we are left out, 
like I, I, I was discussing with some set of groups some days ago, and I have to, I told them that as a matter of fact, we really have nothing left in our treasury, and it's going to be a pain in, our, in, in, every, in every citizen, because at the end of the day, we'll be taxed to pay the legislators. Okay, expect that very soon. So I feel we should concentrate more on tax. We should concentrate more on VAT. We should concentrate more on, you know, the economy right now, and agriculture and all that, and find solutions to, you know, the imminent problem we're about experiencing, rather than we trying to, you know, do um, um, half labor work on, you know, a bill we just copied from Singapore and all that. So, I, I mean, there's a whole lot of, you know, sectors I feel um, the government should um, um, concentrate more, the legislators should concentrate more, but, you know, our, our legislators being who they are, okay, trying to see where and how it will, um, it will come to their interest, would rather focus on those areas. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for this conversation. We probably will be looking at this again when it's revisited. We've been speaking with Barrister Harry Nwabweze, who's the managing partner of Classical Law, and he's joined us to talk about the infectious diseases bill, the outrage it's part amongst Nigerians, and how eventually they have accepted to push it for a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Now, the most recent update is that there's a national health emergency bill that was brought before the House on Tuesday, uh, that's yesterday, and uh, there's been speculations of, you know, this This is just the same bill that has been remixed and brought back. But, of course, we'll be discussing the bill still here on the Good Morning Niger Show. But for now, we'll go on the break. And when we come back, we have our second guest, Priscilla Diko. She's an event planner. And she'll be sharing us from an experiential point of view how exactly the coronavirus has impacted the lives and the businesses of event planners and what exactly she thinks is the future of doing businesses and organizing events in Nigeria. Stick around.